Okay, so the writing that we're working on right now is something called conflict driven. Conflict driven writing is a writing that works because what's happening in the story is intense or interesting. And it's not necessarily as driven by who's in the story or where the story is at. But we know there are always three things that we start with when we're going to design a story. First one are characters. The second one is setting. And the third one is conflict. So we're going to set up kind of something like we would be doing in class today. And we're going to start with characters. And we're going to go super generic. Uh, our characters are going to be Steve and Bob. And you do want to remember, you never want more than maybe three main characters in a story. If you think about some of the classic stories for uh, students that are in about fifth, sixth grade level, you know, you've got um, Percy Jackson that has three main characters. You've got Harry Potter that's got three main characters. You know, if you think about a lot of the really good books that you read, three is kind of the max number because if you get more main characters than that, you're focusing more on the characters than you are on the setting or the plot. And while your characters might be really good, people only want to read about characters if they're doing interesting things. So we don't want to over-focus on the characters. So we're going to stick with Steve and Bob. Uh, the setting could really be anything. Um, and the setting can really give us a good conflict, or the setting could just be there. Um, I'm going to choose a setting that kind of helps push towards a good conflict. And I'm going to say Steve and Bob are running a dog sled race in Alaska. I'm thinking back to some Gary Polson books that I read when I was about fifth, sixth grade. Um, and he was talking about, you know, the conditions of being super cold, like measuring the temperature based on if he spit, whether it froze when it hit the ground or it froze and then bounced before it hit the ground. You're talking negative 30, 40 degrees, snow all the time. You have to be outside. You know, the dogs are insulated. They've got fur and body fat that they've built up, but humans aren't built for those kind of temperatures. So that automatically leads to one of the most popular conflicts that we speak about, read about, talk about, do anything with it, and that is the conflict of survival in nature. You know, man versus the elements. How can I survive this really terrible, brutal, snowy Alaskan conditions with very little resources and still have to take care of my dogs too. Because remember, if I'm at a dog sled race in Alaska, if my, something happens to my dogs, I'm dead automatically. So I may have a big uh, sled full of, of gear, but a lot of the gear that I'm hauling is probably not for me. So we've got Steve and Bob doing a dog sled race and it's man against nature, right? Person against nature. We're struggling to survive this really deadly ordeal. So my conflict comes from my setting and my setting's gonna be cool. It's gonna be something I'm gonna talk about, but this right here, conflict is the story. And if you think about most of the stories that students, teachers, anybody likes to read, main characters are cool, a good setting's important, but without a good conflict, your story's worth nothing. And so I'm gonna do a super, super quick graphic organizer. And I'm gonna start paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, four, five. Five paragraph writing is really typical of what we do. And I will tell you in a good conflict driven writing, you can start at the beginning and that's fine. But a good conflict, I kind of go on and on and on, and I really get into it, and I want to tell my story. I'm going to start with my end. What do I want to know is going to happen at the end of my story? That way, my story kind of explains itself. If I know where I'm going to stop, by the time I get to paragraph three, well, I know, that I know where I have to be. And I'm going to say, Steve and Bob, and I'm going to abbreviate it, S and B, 
almost die. barely survive. I'm wishing I was doing this on a computer, so I had a spell checker, but I think I've got everything right. So I know Steve and Bob are almost going to die, but they're barely going to survive. So I know if they're almost going to die, my climax of my story is going to be where they almost die. You know, that's where things get super intense and you know it's that moment in the action movie where something explodes and people are running and they've got this really big problem and now it's you know right up in their face and they have to solve it or it's a movie you know one of those most dramatic movie moments where you're on the edge of your seat like because you know movies have to have plots the exact same way stories have to have plots because they're always written before they're made into a movie so i'm going to say this is their death defying experience they're going to defy death here in the third paragraph they're almost going to die but not quite which means in here they're going to have to pull it out i was going to say find their way to safety but really i'm going to go with make a plan because down here's where they're going to in our, in our final paragraph in our conclusion is going to be where they find their way to safety barely but in my fourth paragraph, they're going to kind of pull it out of this dangerous situation. Then they're going to have to make a plan so then they can move on to their, their conclusion. And in my, uh, in my falling action here, the reader isn't going to know that they're going to survive. The reader's going to be still left wondering, hey, I wonder if. And that wonder if is what really keeps a reader hooked in is wondering what's going to happen next. So the end of my story is done. Up here, I want to know why they're in a Bob's love because we have to start with that basic introduction. So, you know, we've got Bob and Steve. So Bob and Steve. Um, where they dare each other. Bob and Steve dare each other into a sled race. Something kind of happens here. They get into this death-defying moment. Uh, they pull it out. They make a plan to survive. And even though they almost died, they barely uh, make it to safety. So I need something here to rise my action to bring me up to this death-defying moment. Let's say one of their sleds breaks. And let's say it's negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a pretty realistic condition for running a dog sled race in Alaska. You know, and I, when I read that Gary Paulson book, uh, it was, if it's negative 30, you spit, and your spit hits the ground and crackles as it freezes. But if it's negative 40, you spit, and it freezes on its way down and bounces. So that would be a really good detail to put in here, you know, play up that big drama and base it on an author that I really like that I've read a lot. You know, not steal from them necessarily, but show his influence, keep it in our own words. So now we tell us a very basic story. It's not written in sentences, it's a graphic organizer. All I want really is ideas. Uh, Steve and Bob dare each other to do a, a dog sled race. One of their sleds breaks on a nine minus 40 degrees. Let's make it night. That way it heightens that danger even more. We know they're gonna now have to stop when it's negative 40 degrees outside. You know, they can't take off gloves because of their, they'll get frostbite. You know, the dogs will hunker down and the dogs will be fine, but the people are in a lot of trouble. Um, they make some kind of major repair to the sled that barely works. Uh, and they make a plan to kind of lighten the load on the broken sled, uh, make the load heavier on the, the bigger sled. I mean, you know, you make a million different plans. And then Steve and Bob do almost freeze to death. Maybe they suffer from some kind of hypothermia or a frostbite or something. You know, good stories don't have to be all, you know, happy little elves. We can have some danger in these stories if we want to heighten that interesting factor. So they almost die, but they barely make it out to the end of the race. These look like a setup for a paragraph. But structurally, they could be, but it wouldn't be a super detailed paragraph. 
But what I see here is a topic sentence for each paragraph or topic idea. Some of these could be even broken into multiple sentences. Using the conflict as a driver for your writing means it's going to be action packed and your conflict is going to have to be really interesting. So don't be afraid to talk to people in your group or talk to people around you and say and get some ideas. Talk about some classic ideas, some books, some movies. You know, this is a theme that is used by literally thousands of books and movies. So talk to the people around you and see if you can come up with something that is a conflict that you could base a story on. 